move out of your parents house i know it's cute it's a trend and now people like to have an aesthetic house or a cute apartment and, you know people like to have your white couches and your cute instagram pleasing or instagram nice looking apartment trust me it's gonna get worse i think when you have the discernment of leaving um usually it's god telling you that it's time for you to go to the next level the next phase of your life then you need to move out but if you're just moving out because it's cute and your friends are all moving out you're having your own place you are about to get the shock of your life because being an adult is ghetto out here and it's very very expensive if you don't have a boyfriend that pay your rent girl you're gonna be spending a lot of money baby you should get to know me tapping into that good energy hi guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to be doing 10 money habits that kept me broke a lot of us saw our parents in survival mode living paycheck to paycheck trying to survive trying to send money back home from their families as well and trying to just live and we didn't really see much of money management i think a lot of this generation did not really see much of money management we saw more of our parents just trying to survive and make ends meet and just trying to put food on the table we didn't really see them budgeting this that and the third so we didn't learn those habits we started learning those habits after our credits has been messed up or after they repossessed our car or after we could not pay our credit card or after just when things bad happened that's when we started um learning how to budget our money but a lot of us did not really learn until things started being reality and i would say trust me i've been through it all i've been through my credit being messed up i've been through it all i've been through the lows and the lows having no income and just having to just pray and think like oh god will provide and live by the theory that okay god is not going to embarrass me but i think as young adults we need to start learning habits and little things here and there that can change our but based on the things i've been through um these tips can literally help you and it can change your mindset about money and it's not even about how much money you make because i've made the lowest amount of money and i was still comfortable and i've made a lot of money now and i'm still really really comfortable so it's really not about how much money you make it's also about your mindset and your goals and aspirations on where you want to go um would definitely change you and how you see money one thing i really noticed when i was broke was the fact that i never ever tracked my spending i never tracked how much came into my account and how much left all i did was i was just living paycheck to paycheck i get paid and i just pay all the bills right away and boom the money's done by saturday night and i'm left just waiting for another 13 days to get paid and um, it used to be really really horrible i realized that i was not tracking anything all i was doing was just surviving paying the bills and just feeling like okay well i'll be fine as long as the bills are paid when i started tracking when i actually started and you don't need to do the over tracking method like my sister have quickbooks and all that stuff i should do the most of the tracking stuff for me i just go on my notes you have a notes pad or a notes app on your phone just literally write down the amount of money you make or how much break you bring in in a month and what you need to take care of that paycheck and when i started doing that i realized that i actually had extra money to splurge on to travel um to give my family if they needed help to borrow friends if they needed money to be bored uh, if they needed emergency fund if i get sick i know that okay i'll be good so when i started tracking my expenses i really realized that yes okay now i actually see how much is coming in and as a visual learner it made me realize that okay this is how much i can afford and the things i cannot afford so definitely start tracking your expenses it would change your life another thing is not budgeting anything like you just spend like you're living yolo and you cannot live your life like that as an adult especially when you have bills when you have rent when you have bills to pay as like a normal functioning adult you can't just be spending your money like you're just a millionaire especially us that are not rich yet pretty soon though i claim that in jesus name to be rich for us that are not rich yet you have to budget like i literally have a budget for amazon i get my say utilities on amazon like i don't like to get like my soaps and my body care on in the store like it's just, it's just too much work like walking on the aisles so i just have a subscription like every two months it just comes to my apartment it's just easier for me and amazon just takes it out of my account and usually it's like 150 dollars every month which is not bad because i'm a woman and i have a lot of stuff that i use with skincare hair care i have natural hair so it's a lot of stuff that i use and even that i'm trying to like cut down on, on things because i realized that i have a lot of products in my bathroom that i am not using as much or i don't like as much as i used to like so yeah budget budget everything if you want to go out with your friends like okay say just this month oh, i'm gonna keep um 200 to spend with just having fun and having fun can be anything you can 
can go to a hotel, book a hotel for a hundred dollars, just one night and just sleep there and just enjoy a hotel bed. Um, that's still having fun. In my opinion, the older you get, you, the more you realize how those simple things actually means a lot. Yeah. Whatever you like, if you like playing golf or if you like playing soccer or whatever you like, if you like getting fast food on Fridays or when you get paid or a lot of us like getting seafood. Um, if you like getting seafood bras every time you get paid or every paycheck, you can budget to do that. And if you know that getting an extra pound of crab is going to take you out of budget, then don't do it. Just wait to the next paycheck and do that. Or if you have extra money or sacrifice something else and compensate yourself in that aspect. So yeah, budget is very, very important. Budget every single dollar. My sister say I'm cheap and I think that's a compliment because that's a good thing, right? <laughs> and stay away from credit cards as much as you can. And if you're going to use them, make sure you use them the right way. I used to be a banker for like three years. Yeah, I worked as a banker for three years and I realized that people would come and apply for a credit card and I was one of the people that would convince you to get a credit card even when I knew that you were not capable of handling one. Like I would see like your account is like negatives all the time and I'd be like get a credit card which I actually think is so unethical and I think bankers need to calm down. I know our commissions are really really important to us and we take that really personally but as a former banker I would say do not get a credit card if you don't need to get a credit card and if you're going to use a credit card use it the right way. If you have a $500 credit card, right? $500 limit. You should only be using 20% of any credit card, period. Only 20%. If you know that you cannot pay off that 20% with your weekly or bi-weekly paycheck, do not use that credit card. For me, I use my credit card for everything. I use, matter of fact, I barely ever use my debit card. My credit card is what I use with everything. With groceries, gas, because I like getting points and stuff like that. If you know that you're going to get a credit card, and if you know that you cannot afford to pay it off, do not use it. Another thing about credit cards that people do don't know. Never pay off on the actual due date. Pay off on your statement date. Your statement date is from the 1st to the 15th, right? Pay on the 14th or the 13th because on the 15th, that credit card will report to all credit bureaus about your utilization. So make sure you pay on the statement date. Um, I'll go more. We can talk more about credits and stuff like that on later on video. Um, if you want me to talk about credit and stuff like that, let me know um, and I will definitely do that because I know a lot about credit. I was a banker for a long time and from my own personal experience as well from fixing my credit my credit score used to be like 500 and something like two three years ago like during covid and then now it's like in the 700s so if you want me to talk about credit score and like tips and tricks of how to increase your credit instead of like hiring a credit repair agency let me know and i would definitely have a video for you guys i'm not like an expert or a professional credit fixer but i have a lot of tips that can help you out and if you also need recommendations how to fix your credit i also have people that i recommend that helped me while I was fixing my credit. I could also give you that information if you do need that as well. But yeah, stay away from credit cards and if you're gonna use them, use them the right way. Another tip is staying away from debt. Debt is like slavery. It's like you're literally in a cycle that you will never ever get out of. Whenever you take a debt, you have to take more debt to pay off the debt. So you're gonna continue being in debt forever. If you know that you want to buy say Chanel bag or uh, any bag or whatever or anything th thing that is really expensive, make sure you save up for it. Do not borrow money to buy anything that is not gonna appreciate. Do not do that. If it's not a house, do not borrow money to buy it. If it's a car, it's a depreciation asset. You should not be borrowing money to buy a car. When I was a banker, I used to see people come into the bank and loan money to have a wedding. That is the most irresponsible thing I've ever seen. I saw it so many times and trust me, it left me traumatized. When people come into the bank and borrow twenty, thirty thousand dollars or even more to have a wedding, you're paying for a night that people probably not even going to remember. I know a lot of people in the comments who say, well, it's once in a lifetime, da, 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 da. but you could be in that debt for the rest of your life as well. Like, do you want to just please people for that one night and be in slavery and in bondage for the rest of your life? Because you're not going to pay off that $30,000 right away. Unless you're thinking about winning a lottery, most people are not going to pay that off. And guess what? The interest rates are going to keep going up, except if you have a HELOC. Unless if you have a line of credit, then you have a higher chance of paying it off. But I'm saying if you just have a standard loan, most times you're not going to pay it off. You're going to be on that loan for a really long time, unless after you refinance or maybe you get lucky, a family member gives you 
you money, which is really unlikely to happen, meaning you're going to be in debt forever. So do not do it. Do not do it. Stay away from it. When it comes to debt, like it traumatized me to like have debt. Like I really hate owing or feeling like I need to pay something. Like it gives me serious anxiety. And especially when it comes to those apps that say pay $10 and pay the rest in four payments. You know the apps I'm talking about, like buy now, pay later apps. Delete them from your phone. Delete your account. Like literally delete them from your phone because the more you buy with them, the more they keep increasing your limit. I think it was a firm or something pay. I checked one time and I was like, they gave me like a thousand or almost two thousand dollars limit for buy now pay later i was like so like scared i'm like what like so i could actually buy something worth a thousand dollars and like split it which is a good thing like if you really need something and there's really nothing that you really need that you need to do that unless if your kid need like diaper or formula then you can go that route um that is like you know life or death situation but if you don't really need it you don't need to buy it like if you are trying to buy a bag on buy now pay later you are a slave to that and you need to stop because you're gonna keep going in that rabbit hole and it's really hard to come out of so yeah do not fall for those apps it's really hard to pay off when you continue and when you get used to owing it's like an addiction you're gonna keep owing it's it's not going to stop it's a cycle that you're not gonna stop going and stop doing another tip is do not depend on one source of income if you are only depending on one source of income to pay all your bills you are one step away from being homeless okay you can literally lose your job right now and you will not have anything it's really scary like i get really scared for someone like me that has lost a job before i'm always so um skeptical about employers whenever i get hired i always find another source of income because i'm always feeling like fire me tomorrow i could literally come in and you could tell me to go back out so that really traumatized me so whatever you have to do to make extra money if you have to DoorDash, if you have to do instacart if you have to sell hair if you have to sell soap whatever maybe sell whip butters sell something like do something that is an extra source of income make youtube videos like this is an extra source of income for me even though i love doing it but youtube is gonna pay me a check so find something that you like um that you could actually make extra sources of income you could be a lifeguard there's so many jobs like, you can literally work in a gym after work like just find extra jobs so you can make money like right now i think i have like three to four sources of income so if one thing does not work i know that the other thing or the other things are gonna fall through and it's i'm gonna at least make something from it i'm not gonna starve if i lose my actual nine to five job that makes sense another tip is even though i do not like debt there's some debts that i'm a little bit lenient or towards i would say like student loans and mortgages are things that you should not really be focused focusing on paying off um, whenever I see videos of oh I paid off my student loan or I paid off my mortgage it's nice yeah it's nice if you're like in your 50s or in your 60s and you're trying to retire but I don't really feel like as an adult or as a young adult you should be focused on things like that I would prefer you invest that money into real estate or a business that can actually generate more income for you than paying off your student loan your $40,000 student loan they're not even caring to collect like those student loan companies are chill like they they've been really settled the government has really settled them so they're not even they're not calling pressing your next so bills that are not pressing and your mortgage your house is not going anywhere like you don't need to pay off your house right now you're in your 20s your early 20s and you're trying to pay off your house that sounds a little bit ridiculous use that money to invest in other things um, and generate more income and make more money rather than just putting that money all your eggs in one basket that house can burn I mean of course insurance will give you money for it but it's not really a necessity to actually pay off those things like student loans and mortgages don't even think about it pay the minimum payment and move on of course your mortgage pay the actual payment and of course pay off your credit cards of course pay off your credit cards do not leave a balance in your credit card ever always pay off your credit cards but student loans don't really care like oh did obama um, paid off his student loans when he became president yeah you see like a lot of people are paying off their student loans when they start making more money um and they have spirit change but it's not really a necessity and i'm not even trying to pay off my student loan because what if biden or a president come and decide to clear it out and then i've been trying to pay it off all these years like i'll be really pissed off about that so pay the minimum payment and move on it's okay that's part of life just move on don't not try to pay those things off it's not worth it and one last tip that i would say if it's not a necessity do not move out of your parents house i know it's cute it's a trend and now people like to have an aesthetic house or a cute apartment and, you know people like to have your white couches and your cute instagram pleasing or instagram nice looking apartments do not move out of your parents house if it's not 
a necessity. Of course, if you are in a toxic environment, if you need your own space, if you have a lot of siblings, then go ahead and move out. But for me personally, I needed to move out of my mom's house because I was too comfortable living in her basement. I feel like paying that $500 every single month and, you know, just giving her extra money here and there was too comfortable for me. I needed to be in an environment that I could be creative in, I could focus and I could actually be myself and actually have my own routine. Um, when I was in my mom's house, I would just go to her kitchen and eat her food. I mean, my mom cooked literally every single day and I felt like I was not growing and I felt like I was too comfortable. So if you're in the same position, I highly recommend you move out. You're overdue to move out because if you continue staying there and you pass your mid twenties and you pass your mid thirties, trust me, it's going to get worse. I think when you have the discernment of leaving, um, usually it's God telling you that it's time for you to go to the next level, the next phase of your life, then you need to move out. But if you're just moving out because it's cute and your friends are all moving out, you're having your own place, you are about to get to the shock of your life because being an adult is ghetto out here and it's very, very expensive. If you don't have a boyfriend that pay your rent, girl, you're going to be spending a lot of money. Rent is like literally taking money and throwing it in the garbage. I know now there are programs where you can sign up for and it can, whenever you pay your rent on time, um, it can report to credit bureaus. I don't really think it affects your credit as much as using your credit card or your credit card utilization. So if you do not need to move out, do not move out. Stay as much as you can in your mom's basement, in that room, as much as you can. Share that room with your sister as much as you can until you at least secure six figures job or six figures income. Even with the six figures job, um, depends on the type of lifestyle you want to live and the type of apartment you want to live. You might need to have two of those six figure jobs to be able to survive out here in the streets. It's expensive. Like groceries are expensive. Like I think I spend around like $200 every two weeks on groceries um, because we cook a lot and um, we always have people over. If you have a boyfriend that pays most of the bills, that's great as well. But um, if you don't, then it's going to be very, very tasking for you. Um, or if you have a friend, um, for a lot of people, they have a friend that also want to move out around the same age, uh, which I don't recommend living with a friend because it's a lot of respect factors that comes into it. And I don't want to talk about that. We can talk about that later on in another video. But I think having your own space and actually living by yourself is actually really nice. If you can barely pay the rent. I used to work for an apartment community before. I mean, I still do. Um, that's my part-time job. When they really tell you that you need to be able to afford the rent four times in a month, don't try to finesse your paperwork to try to get into the apartment and not being really able to afford the apartment. Like really, really be sure that you could actually pay that apartment four times in a month. Like your paycheck, your bi-weekly paycheck can pay two times and your monthly paycheck can pay four times because they really are trying to look out for you. They're serious because if you cannot pay an apartment three to four times in a month, most likely you cannot afford that apartment. You cannot afford that rental. You cannot live there uh, because they put in consideration of the other bills that come with living alone or living by yourself. Or if you have someone that you can share the apartment with and both of you guys can pay four times in a month, that's absolutely great. But don't go get a luxury high rise apartment knowing well that you cannot pay it. Don't call your cousin to finesse these pay stubs and you move in and then you can't pay the apartment. They're going to evict you and your stuff are going to be outside when you come from the club and it's not cute. I've seen it so many times. So yeah, make sure you can afford the apartment and make sure you can afford your lifestyle and the things that you want to do before you move out of your parents' house. It is ghetto out here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have more tips for anyone looking for more tips, comment down below more tips down below so people can learn. Um, I'll be in the comment section having a conversation with you guys. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's an abomination to be on my channel and you're watching my videos. If you've watched more than one video and you're not subscribed, that's unethical, okay? Make sure you subscribe to my channel, thumbs up this video and subscribe. I've said that like 200 times. Yeah, I mean it. Subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos coming up. There's a lot of great content that's coming up and I don't want you guys to miss it. And make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok. You can also follow me on Facebook, but I think my Facebook is more like family style type of Facebook. So yeah, if you want to get to know me more, see my mom, my sister, my brother, my cousins, like my family, you can follow me on Facebook because it's mostly family stuff that I post on Facebook. But Instagram is ratchet. Um, my TikTok is ratchet. If you're more of a ratchet type of vibes and you like to be lit, follow me on Instagram because you're definitely going to see me go out a lot to my friends um, and have fun and travel. So yeah, if you want to see explicit stuff, Instagram is like the perfect place to follow me and TikTok. Um, that's where you're going to see explicit stuff about my life or get to know me. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching again. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out. Yeah, I'm feeling